Rub up your engines! Well, old Eli's not selling his cars. He's now making more than he's selling and they're stockpiling. Well, one Model Y discount is more than 15,000 bucks, making the Model Y be just about $3,000 more expensive than their cheapest Model 3, right? The problem is now the world's catching up with old Elon and his Teslas, right? There's only so many people that want to buy them at that price or even want to buy them, period. I tested out one of these Volvo electric cars and I really liked it other than saying well it's an electric car I wouldn't want an electric car but that particular one that Volvo made was pretty well made fun to drive right but Volvo electric car sales in the United States this year are down 64 percent down people that have gotten them don't like them they bought them and I see used ones that have 20,000 miles on them and they're going for $24,000 and the new ones are $67,000 people don't like them and now it's catching up Teslas are no longer new they've been out for a while and people are saying hey, that guy was a pain in the butt look at Hertz they bought a hundred thousand of them to rent they're getting rid of them all they said they cost too much to maintain people don't want to rent them they don't want to drive them around and it's starting to grab old Elon by the short and curlies now and it's only going to get worse as far as I'm concerned him saying oh well, we're gonna we're gonna make a sub $25,000 car now oh no I guess we're not we're gonna do something else so deep doo-doo is happening at Tesla let's face the facts when they start cutting prices like that hey they got serious problems well here's an interesting one people were buying pickup trucks like mad and coronavirus I don't know maybe they're getting ready for the end of civilization they wanted a pickup truck to escape with right for the first time in a long time the sales of pickup trucks especially the big ones have fallen between January and March of this year the first quarter of 2024 vehicle sales themselves were up 5.6 percent but pickup trucks were down 6.4 percent and the mid-sized pickup trucks are down 31 percent sales of smaller cars has gone up maybe people finally realized do we really need this big giant thing to carry a few people around you know they got so carried away with building trucks bigger and bigger and bigger they become like the Titanic you know and now the sales are starting to sink people are realizing this is horrible gas mileage do I really need this big giant truck or do I even need a truck at all right and I don't blame people because there's many places you can rent a truck I saw one you can rent it said the first 80 minutes is $15 or something you know so you can rent a truck at Lowe's bring your stuff take it back or rent for half a day or a day why well, spend all the money on gas and big trucks when you can rent one when you need it you don't need it all the time now if you have a business sure you do the sales to regular people on pickup trucks is starting to drop off ortho 3.6 says how should I break in my new car is there a break-in period when breaking a new car what's the best conclusions to take during the period of break-in to improve the longevity of my engine should I not go over the given speed limit in highest gear to avoid revving and hold off having fun until everything's settled okay well cars aren't made as poorly as they work in terms of metallurgy you know, when I was young in the 60s you bought a new car you wouldn't want to take it over 50 miles an hour for the first 500 miles you wouldn't want to drive it at one speed you'd vary it up and down and stuff like that just like if you buy even a modern day outboard motor like a Mercury they show you the break-in period how many hours it takes cars are different modern cars I would not drive full speed fast it'll go do burnouts and stuff I would wait until the vehicle had a thousand miles on it before I'd start doing stuff like that I'm conservative so if I ever bought a new car I may never who knows who knows what's gonna happen but I never have because I'm cheap I buy them used and save money but if I bought a new car I would probably change the oil at a thousand miles just the first time and then I would do it every five using full synthetic oil and a synthetic oil filter that's that's what I do you don't want to abuse a car anyways and then when it's brand new you really want things to kind of work their ways through and of course you don't want something to break and then they're gonna say you abuse the car the warranty's invalid so first thousand miles I wouldn't push too much on it you can drive it whatever speed you want you know if you're going 80 modern cars have many gears and the transmission's going 80 it might only be going 2800 rpms or something it's not that high it's not going to hurt anything right I would change the oil the first thousand miles well they have a lot of car recalls right well here's a recall that kind of shocked me a hand sanitizer gel is now being recalled because believe it or not it can cause comas or blindness if you're curious it's called 
Aruba Aloe Hand Sanitizer. I guess they didn't make it right or their formula was wrong in the first place. The Food and Drug Administration said substantial methanol exposure can cause nausea, vomiting, headache, blurred vision, coma, seizures, permanent blindness, as well as permanent damage to the central nervous system or death. To begin with, not only, like I said, the bacteria is everywhere, but bacteria adapt so quickly that I'm sure there's all kinds of bacteria out there now that's immune to these stupid hand sanitizers. The ones that survive, then they breed. They keep making it stronger and stronger. It might kill you. So if I were you, I'd stay away from the hand sanitizers. You see them everywhere. I mean, it's become the new neurosis of the United States. Everywhere you go, they got these hand sanitizers. I saw them in California all over the place. And had people go and use them every two seconds there. The nuts in California, I saw just about every store you'd go into. There they were on a stand, you know. Oh, oh sanitizer. You can't stop bacteria. There's too many of them out there, people. Just, we can't see them, so you can make all kinds of stories about, well, this will get rid of them. You don't know if it works or not, because you can't see the bacteria anyways. <laughs> Well, here's a guy complaining about General Motors, and I don't blame him. They were supposed to fix his vehicle free, and they did, and they won't do anything about it. C.J. Allard says, Scotty, love your work. I took my 2014 Chevy Malibu to the dealership. They said a TSB came out. It's for the steering wheel sticking one center. My car was affected by this issue. But GM said, oh, yours isn't free. Yours is uncovered, even though mine had the same problem. I had to pay 150 bucks out of pocket for the reprogramming, which fixed the issue. I tried calling GM. They didn't even attempt to offer a refund, and my vehicle is within warranty parameters for that fix. Is there anything I can do to get reimbursed for their mistake? Well, if you'd listen to me and people that know about vehicles, they tell you don't buy the GM vehicle in the first place. The quality's gone down the toilet, right? But you have. Now, what you're finding out is. There's two tiers. GM makes the vehicles, but the dealerships sell them. They're separate places. The companies that sell you the car, the dealerships are all privately owned. They never want to give you any money. They don't do anything for free. You paid them. They're holding out of that money and they're not going to give it back, right? And GM, being a giant corporation that's dead from the neck up and their head doesn't seem to know much of anything. She's just a yes person for GM. She worked her way up the ladder, so now she's reached the height of her incompetency and has stayed there for quite some time. And it shows with GM's problems, right? She doesn't know that much about cars. They're not going to do anything because, well, yours isn't the right VIN number. We don't count that under the free fix. Even though your car had the problem, you'd think in good faith they'd fix it for free. But the problem is the dealerships, they're clinging their money. They're like, hey, we're not working on this car for nothing. And the company, they don't want to fix anything that legally they don't have to. And since yours isn't included with that VIN number, I would complain. No, maybe write a letter to Mary and say, I love my GM, but look, your dealership screwed me over. Could you please give me my money back? Give it a try. You know, you never know. <laughs> you never know. But like I say, they're all dead from the neck up. And you'll probably get some cliche form letter or form email saying, oh, uh, we're so sorry you're having problems, but basically, we're not going to do anything about it. Well, they're starting more seriously to try to work on wave power for generating electricity. With pushing everybody electric cars, power has to come from somewhere, right? Well, there's a company called Eco Wave Power, and they're working on trying to build large-scale tidal generation, waves and tides. Now, they're just starting a three-month study of the United States coast to see where they could do it. Now, they have a pilot station in California. It's at the port of Los Angeles. But as they say, and I quote, it's currently on static display. So just sitting there doing nothing, and they're planning on actually putting the guts in and making it operate in the next few months, they say. The problem with this stuff is it is so much in the future interesting technology. Maybe they'll be able to do it, but they're going to have to stop all the corrosion of salt water. Corrodes metal like no tomorrow. And if you're making these giant generators, you can't make them out of plastic. The stuff's going to snap, break. You'd have to make it out of some kind of metal, and the metal's going to corrode in the ocean. That's, you know, the real problem with getting any kind of energy out of waves is most of the waves are in salt water, and salt water corrodes metal. And of course, the government comes up with these wild figures. The United States Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Laboratory said wave energy in the United States alone has the technical research potential to produce enough electricity to power 130 million homes. Yeah, the potential. If you got all the energy in the way, that's not going to happen, people, right? Potential in reality is a big difference between the two of them. Yeah? What are they going to put? These wave generators on every inch of the coast? That's not going to happen. It costs too much money. People that own beachfront property are going to whine about it and stuff like that. So.
<laughs> they always come up with these wild figures, try to make it look like it's good, because all the energy that I see that's created from wind turbines, wave turbines, stuff in the ocean, it's a spit in the bucket. Like I said the other day, New Jersey's trying to do these offshore windmill stuff, right? And they say, by 2040, it'll make 11 gigawatts. And you find out that New Jersey uses 61,000 something gigawatts of energy. So it's really a spit in the bucket. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.